Well, good evening. My name is Steve Clark, and I'm a candidate for Ward 3, and I'm also chair for Citizens for Direct Democracy. And uh, as you all know from my previous videos, uh, I've been working on the mandatory water and sewer hookup that the city is trying to use to force people to hook up to their water and sewer systems when they already have a good, well accepted that is functioning and no problem at all. So here it is. I'm calling this an unmitigated success. Mandatory collection only when water and sewer fails. Okay, so a pilot project ends with recommendation to amend bylaw requiring connection to municipal services. Now this is quite a story and um, I'm going to uh, link my previous two videos below in the, uh, in the show notes. But uh, let me just catch you up to date. We, we have a situation here in the city of Quarter Lakes where there are about 160 homes that uh, have a good well and septic and uh, city water and sewer has been extended past their homes. Now the city is trying to force these residents to hook up to city water and sewer. Now in the Municipal Act um, it states quite clearly that you have to ask the permission of the owner before you can do that. And then if we move over to now the Consolidated Municipal Act uh, it, it says the same thing but the owner has to request in writing that the city come in and hook them up to water and sewer. And so what had happened was even though many residents had written letters about their situation to the city and to the newspaper, um, we were still getting steamrolled by the city and we couldn't understand how they were managing to do that. And uh, you'll see in uh, the next little clip that what they did was they created a bylaw that made it an offence to refuse to hook up. Now the, the offence ca carried heavy penalties. It was like a hundred thousand dollar fine and you could possibly go to jail if you refused to pay it. Uh, this was absolutely staggering. Now what this is akin to is that we have the right of freedom of speech which is written into our constitution. Okay, So this would be like the city writing a bylaw creating an offence for you to open your mouth and speak. The city absolutely cannot do this and that is why I believe they have been forced to amend this bylaw because they've broken the Municipal Act which gives the resident the right to refuse hookup. Okay, uh, so now they say as they should do and I completely agree. You know, if you have a failing sewer uh, septic system, sorry, or your water is polluted or there is a health hazard, then yes, you should be required to hook up to the municipal water and sewer system. But if your well and septic are functioning well, you should not be forced to do so. Now, the thing that really upset me about this whole thing was that of these 160 peoples, which is just, you know, a drop in the ocean as far as City of Quarter Lakes is concerned, uh, most of these people are elderly, okay, they're between uh, 75 and 85. Uh, their houses were there long before the public utilities were put in. And you see, what was going to happen, if they forced them to hook up, the city said that they would come onto their property, they would dig the lines in, and they would charge them uh, approximately $10,000 is, is what the, the cost is to get the water into your house and uh, that was going to be put on your property tax bill. So that would make your property tax bill in arrears and you then get charged 18% interest on those arrears as well as a minimum bill of $170 per quarter even if you don't turn the tap on because all of these bills are now front end loaded. So this was absolutely unconscionable and as I say, I've been working with um, a young man who shall remain nameless for the time being in Omimi, who is going through this situation, and we managed to get a temporary injunction to prevent the city from deducting the uh, cost of water and sewer services from his property tax bill. And we are going to court again next Tuesday on the 16th to get a mandatory injunction to stop the city not only forcing the hookup 
but also the forced payment for services that are not being received, as you can clearly see in the Consumer Protection Act, that you cannot charge people for services that they don't receive. Now, I hope we can get this injunction because the city is really overstepping its boundaries here. I, I, I really can't believe that councillors even allowed this to get as far as it has. To bully 160 residents when you know in five to ten years it's pretty much going to resolve itself because apart from the handful of young people in this situation, those older people are going to be moving into seniors residences, uh, into smaller more manageable uh, apartments, um, geared to income possibly with relatives or sad to say passing on but the new owners of those houses I am pretty certain are going to want to hook up to water and sewer so this situation is just going to resolve itself I don't know why the city could not have just left these people alone to live their lives. These are people who are struggling already financially. Inflation has been overtaking them. Their incomes have not kept up with the cost of living. And to think of the hardship that you had been forcing on these people by inflicting a forced water and sewer hookup and continual billing for services they're not receiving is absolutely unconscionable. Anyway, I will keep you posted on this and we will be going to court next Tuesday and um, I can't video in there unfortunately but I think I may do a little update to let you know what happened after and what the judge said. Okay, well thank you very much. That's a quick update on the water and sewer connection situation and uh, please you take care, have a great evening and a great weekend coming up and if you live in Ward 3, please I'm asking for your vote so I can continue with this work on council and actually get some real changes made uh, in favour of the residents. And I'm hoping to bring some common sense to this situation. You take care now. Steve Clark, signing off. Bye-bye now.